We are so excited to have you here at UTRGV. This is a very exciting time, and we are sure that you have plenty of questions, plenty of questions about what it is going to be like to be a student here at UTRGV. And the goal of this hour is to get as many answers for you as possible, or to at least point you in the direction where you can find some of those answers. Uh, we have a great panel here for you today. We've got uh, some individuals from the College of Sciences. We have several students from different departments who are going to be available in the Q&A rooms to share their wisdom, to share some advice that they wish they had when they were a freshman or coming into UTRGV. Um, and we also have some advisors here today. who are going to be sharing some advising advice at the end of the session. So here is our agenda for today. We have one hour to try to share with you as much information as we can. So we're gonna pack it all in as best we can today. So um, right now, after our introductions, we are gonna have an overview of the College of Sciences with our very own Dr. Zayden, who is fantastic. And he's gonna tell you some things that will help you out coming in to the university. Then we're going to tell you a little bit about the UTeach program. If you haven't heard about the UTeach program, you are in for a treat. This is a fantastic program that's going to double your career options. So if it's a good fit for you, we're going to let you know about it today. After that, we're going to uh, give just some quick instructions on how to get into the breakout room. So if this is your first time in Zoom or your first time doing breakout rooms in Zoom, that's okay. We're going to walk you through it. And if you have any questions at any point or struggling with the breakout rooms, we're here to help. And then you're going to get about 30 minutes in the breakout room that you choose, physics, bio, chem, or math. And in that breakout room, you're going to have the students um, who are going to be answering some questions about what it is like to be a College of Science student here at UTRGV. They're going to talk to you a little bit about the classes, professors, organizations, resources you should definitely know about. And then we're going to open it up for an open Q&A where you can ask any questions you like. You can type them in the chat. You can unmute yourself. This is your time. Take advantage. So we'll have about 30 minutes for that. And then the last five minutes, we're going to bring everybody back to the main room for some advising help and closing. So that's our plan for today. See how it goes. We're very excited to have you all here and to be sharing in this event. So with that, um, I do want to just say that this um, College of Science Q&A is a joint collaboration between the UTRGV College of Sciences, the UTRGV University College, and the UTeach program. Thank you to all of our wonderful pro uh, partners from all three programs for putting today's event together. And thank you to our students uh, who have come today to share their advice uh, with you all. So thank you to everyone who made this possible. So we're going to pass the baton now to our first speaker, Dr. Zayden. Dr. Zayden is the Senior Associate Dean for Academic Affairs and Student Success. He was born and raised in West Western Pennsylvania, got his bachelor's in ecology and evolutionary biology from Princeton University, his master's in biology from the University of Mississippi, and his PhD in biological sciences from the University of Arkansas. Um, now, we got him here at UTRGV in 2003 in the biology department and have been delighted ever since because uh, Dr. Zayden uh, studies herpetology and physical ecology. So you will see him at some point with some very cool snakes and other creepy collars. So if you have not had the delight to see Dr. Zayden with all of those um, cool animals that he has in his collection, uh, that is going to be one of the big treats that you'll have here at UTRGV. Uh, because Dr. Zayden is in charge of uh, academic affairs and student success, not only can he tell you a little bit about the College of Sciences, but also about what can help you be a successful student here at UTRGV and some great resources and things that we have. So without further ado, I am going to turn off the PowerPoint for right now and give it to Dr. Seaden. Oops. All righty, folks. Well, thank you very much for having me. Um, I always enjoy these kinds of things. Um, so just 
briefly, you know, something you, know, you need to know to be a success at this university. My name and email. That is the first thing. I am, I am here to help the students. I, I have many, many roles with all this, uh, but you know, help. I'm with you guys from, you know, the initial onboarding when you're pre-freshman, throughout your time here, um, throughout graduation, and beyond. So I'm always here, you know, lurking in the shadows. You know, not in creepy stalker way, but think guardian angel because. You're gonna get yourself in trouble. You're gonna screw something up. I am the, in case of emergency, break glass. So, you know, anytime you run into any sort of issues, check with me first. If I don't know, I know someone who does know. So that's sort of the, the first thing. Um, so I just wanna give you a little bit of an overview of what the college is. What is a college? Because, you know, everyone knows what a university is and everyone knows what department or school there are, but there's this sort of mid-level organization called the college that you know people don't really know um, what's going on. So the idea with the college is it's a bunch of similar schools and departments that are brought together under the leadership of a dean. So you have directors and chairs uh, overseeing the schools and, and departments, and you have a dean who's overseeing all of them. So in the College of Sciences, we're led by uh, Dean Insetta, um, absolutely is amazing Dean, only been here a couple years. Um, and she has, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, four people who are serve as associate deans to help out. Um, you met me, we have an associate dean that deals with faculty issues. We have an associate dean that deals with uh, grad school, grad programs and research. And then we have an associate dean for uh, you know, sort of like new new programs, new ideas, and assessment. So we have this organizational structure um, to help the schools and departments uh, run as efficiently as they can. And so the best way to think about why we're all together here, because the College of Sciences has biology, chemistry, uh, physics, astronomy, uh, mathematical and statistical sciences, and earth environment and marine sciences. So why did we all get put together? Well, the best way to think about this is start with an organism. It doesn't matter if you're, you're not a biologist, just start with some living thing. Uh, if you need help on that, um, I'm going with snake. Okay, so that, that's what I'm thinking of. So picture whatever you have there. Okay, so that the, the you know, biology, you know, biology is the study of life. Okay, so you have, your living organisms. So that's one unit. So when you take all the, the mystery and magic out of what living is, it's really just an organized series of biochemical reactions. All right, there's your chemistry. The two are always together. Back onto the snake. Well, you have the structure and the movement. Okay, that's physics. And in fact, chemistry is technically just the physics of molecules. So we have those three. So how do a bunch of dumb biologists, chemists, chemists, and physicists talk to each other? The common language is math and how do we analyze things with statistics. Our final uh, unit in there, the School of Earth Environment and Marine Sciences, that is a multidisciplinary group that takes pieces from all of those areas and adds to you know, social sciences and some other things. So that is the College of Sciences. We're all you know, working together towards you know, the common goal. Um, you know, if you're in one of these, you're probably gonna be taking a bunch of classes from another one. Um, you know, biology relies heavily on, other, on mathematics, uh, chemistry, and physics, for example. So, you know, that is the really brief overview. I wanna make sure we get back on time here. Um, I'm gonna be hanging around to kind of help out with things. I, I know a thing or two about, about all the degrees. I know the biology degree very well because I was biology chair for five and a half years before I stepped into this role. Um, I've become quite proficient with the chemistry degree because I've been filling in as interim chemistry chair for this past semester. 
and then all the others I reviewed them with students over the years. So I might be able to help here and there uh, with some things. So I'll, I'll be kind of hanging around wherever, wherever you all tell me to go. So I'm glad you're here. Remember, I'm here to help. Um, just, uh, just let me know. Excellent. Thank you so much. All right. So um, in order to make sure that we stay on time, we're going to keep our you Teach overview fairly brief. Um, so we're here to tell you a little bit about a special program just for math and science majors uh, here at UTRGV called you Teach. So you Teach is a fantastic opportunity to double your career options. If you decide to try out you Teach, and that's all it is, try it out, see if it, it's something that you like, then you get to graduate with your bachelor's in science or BIS in physics, chemistry, math, or I'm missing one, biology. <laughs> and um, you also get a teaching certification on top of it. So basically it's two careers for the price of one. So what you get to do is in addition to taking your math or science classes, you're gonna take about one to two you teach courses a semester. And in these courses, we are gonna show you what it's like to teach. We're gonna put you out in the field with a partner. So you'll get to be with somebody, it's not that scary. Um, and you will get a chance to teach lessons to local elementary, middle and high school students. Um, so this is a great opportunity. If you've ever thought about teaching, if you've ever been like, hmm, teaching, maybe that's for me. Here's your chance to try it out, see if you like it. And if you do, you still get to be a math major, a science major, a bio major or a chem major, but you also get that teaching certification on top of it. So you can still go on to medical school, you can still go on to grad school, you can still go on and do industry in those fields, but if you wanna be a teacher, you have that option as well. So if you are interested, we suggest you start off with step one. That's the first course in the series, it's UTCH 1101. It meets one, uh, once a week, that's it. It's just a one credit hour course and you'll get a chance to see what it's like to be a teacher. So we're going to have you put you in the field for three lessons so you can try out teaching math or science lessons to local elementary school students. And if you are like, yes, sign me up, I would love to try out one of those classes. We have two being offered in the Brownsville campus and three on the Edinburgh campus. So those are the uh, CRN codes. If you'd like to jot that down and register today. We would love to have you um, in one of our sections. They are filling up fast. I think um, one or two of them is already filled and you, so you can get yourself on the wait list. But if you are interested, make sure you sign up for one of those so you can try out teaching and see if it's right for you while still pursuing that uh, degree in math, science, physics, or chemistry, whichever one you prefer. Okay, I'm gonna take a second right here and open it up to my fellow master teachers who are also part of the UTeach program to see if they'd like to add anything real fast and then we'll move into the breakout room. Well, I guess I'd like to add something. My name is Omar Lisondo. I'm a science master teacher with the UTeach program. If you enroll in this 1101 course, you're, we already said you're not gonna be by yourself. You're gonna have a partner, but you're gonna have, at least in the Edinburgh campus, you're gonna have three master teachers helping you out. So you're gonna to get to get different perspectives and experiences from the three of us and also in Brownsville, I'm not 100% sure, maybe they, Ms. Trevino can clarify, you're either going to get two or three master teachers. So you're going to get the support of multiple instructors in this course. We also have with us today, Ms. Gonzalez. Ms. Gonzalez. Hi, everyone. I'm Mrs. Gonzalez, and I am at the, uh, the Edinburgh campus. And I would say it would be crazy if you would not sign up today. I know there's a question out there. When is the last day for registration? Um, I'd say it's not too late in today, nor within the following weeks, but uh, try to check in as soon as possible. But Dr. Zayton, do you know when the last day? I mean, technically students can still register after classes start after classes. a couple of days, um, but you know, seriously, I do not wait. Um, not wait. It is, it is already, there's a lot full, so. Yeah. Do not wait. That's the thing. And, and let me just add, there's so much. We're like a big family here, which will give you support. We see you from day one as your freshman year, and we see you all the way through your four years. So it's a big family. There's good support. 
It's strong. Um, it's a strong, encouraging family that we encourage you to be successful out there. Try it out. All you have to do is try one class. If it's for you, let's do it. I'm ready. Let me just tell you, I miss our students. And so we have the energy and we're ready to get you back in class. So thank you, Ms. Gonzalez. Thank you, Mr. Elizondo. Yeah, absolutely. Try it out. It, again, it's it's a very low risk. You know, it's a one credit hour class. We meet once a week and it's really designed for people who are not sure. Like, uh, is this for me? Is it not? So we sort of ease you into teachings to get your feet wet so you can see if this is for you. If you love it, great. If you don't, it was just a one credit hour class and you learned how to teach. How great is that? That skill is going to follow you for the rest of your life. So um, if you want to know more about you teach, guess what? Every single one of the students here who's going to be in your breakout rooms to talk to you are student leaders. Are you teach students? So they can answer some more questions about that. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move into the breakout rooms. Your choices are biology, chemistry, physics, and math. So if you are already one of those majors, great. You already know which room you wanna be in. If you are not, that's okay. Just pick the one that seems the most interesting to you. The one that you'd like to know a little bit more about. Once you are in your breakout room, um, you can have the opportunity to ask questions. Uh, we have um, a couple of students who are those majors who will be able to answer some questions for you about what it's like to be a, a student, a UTeach student, but just also a College of Science student here at UTRGV. They're going to share some great advice and tips. And then it's, a, it's an open Q&A. So, you know, if you want to ask a question, put it in the chat, unmute yourself. This is your time. Take advantage. We're going to be in there for about 30 minutes and then we're going to all come back to the main room after that. And so I just registered for it like when you like how you register for all your other classes like you just search up um, you teach or step one and then you just register for a class that fits and then the you teach professors are really good at like talking to you even before the class starts like they're good at like reaching out to you and like letting you know about different things that um like how the class is going to look but yeah that's how I registered just like normal classes so there's no fees associated with this and you don't need to apply for anything no it was like totally free it's like super everyone says it's super low risk but it really is like all the people that I took the class with were like just like really curious about teaching we all were and so like we took it as like a dipping your toes into the water and then you like fall in love with it really fast. But um, yeah, that was me. You just like register. And then as soon as you like you register, like if it was a normal class and that's it. The whole teaching, like the registering for the teaching program comes like a couple steps later, but like as an incoming freshman, you don't have to worry about any of that yet. That's true. Uh, Dr. Groves, it talk Rudy has a question about how long you teaches. Do you think you can answer that one? Yeah, so as an incoming freshman, you can do your you teach classes, and it's not going to take you any extra time or any extra money to finish all of our classes. And there, there are several classes. You'll take one or two per year to finish this part of the program. You might think of it a little bit like a minor. Um, so if you're starting out as a freshman and you start this program, you should be able to finish in a normal, normal four years. Um, if you're a sophomore, we can condense it a little bit and you should still be able to finish in four years. I've had somebody start as a junior and I think she took a, like maybe one extra semester. And I think what you'll find is that your you teach courses tend to be a little bit of a relief when you get to those upper division science classes. And so you teach is typically not what holds people back. It's that, oh, maybe they want to slow down on, you know, some of their major course sequence. So they're not taking four biologies their senior year or, you know, something like that. But you, you should be able to finish it in a normal time frame, like four yeah. years if you're a full-time student. Yeah, definitely the sooner you That's start, a great the question, better. Uh, so, 
Kayla, Kayla, Kayla had a question, but I think a good person to answer Kayla's question, Kayla was asking, what are the courses that follow 1101? I think Nayeli Garza, who's a physics major, might be able to give us some info. Nayeli, tell us about where you're at in the UTeach pathway. So I started off UTeach when I was a freshman. So these past two semesters, I haven't taken a UTeach class. But the, after you teach uh, 1101, it's you teach 1102. So it's kind of the same as the you step one, but you do more of the designing of it um, lessons. So if you start off freshman year, you you don't have to cram everything in. Like if you were to start, like they said, uh, junior year, you could have like some semesters free from you teach classes, but for example, like you teach uh, step one, you're teaching. Step two, you're also teaching. There's a few you teach, uh, you teach classes that you do not teach. For example, there's like a philosophy uh, class for like um, the history of like science and math. There's, for example, as a physics major, they didn't offer um, um, the research methods for, um, for physics, so I would have to take it in biology. And that is the class I am taking currently. It's research methods. So there's a so to answer the question, just to give you a little bit of insight, there's a couple of classes that come after and they involve teaching in person, thinking about teaching, the philosophy of teaching, look, thinking about how students learn, the development of the brain, when you how you should teach, asking questions, things like that. So there's a lot of stuff you're gonna learn while you're also taking your science courses. Ms. Groves, earlier, I think I, you were gonna say something and I think I spoke over you. Oh, that's okay. I don't remember what I was going to say, but I have something new to say. Okay. And so I just wanted to point out that the first two classes, we call them step one and step two, they are considered recruitment classes. Mm -hmm. So both of those classes are designed for you to try out teaching and see if you like it. In step one, you go and teach at the elementary level. And then in step two, you kind of take it up a notch and you go teach at the middle school level. The reality is most of our students plan on teaching at the high school level, and you will eventually go into high school level classes um, in later classes. But these first two classes, um, you could take them during your freshman year and they're both considered recruitment classes to just kind of get your feet wet, try it out, see if you like it. Great feedback. Is there any other questions from anybody? So the it's people, a lot of people are asking about financial aid. Uh, once again, we don't, we can't answer for financial aid because they're like the boss of the money of grants and scholarships and, and all that stuff. But if you're, it, it, you don't pay extra for this. It's it's a class. It's you enroll in a class. There's nothing special in the sense of a class from it. So if you have financial aid, it should cover it, depending on how much money you have in financial aid. Uh, if you have five hundred dollars in financial aid, you need to pay the rest, whether it's a physics class, a math class, a PE class. But if you're if you're covered, it's there's nothing unique about it. We don't even charge fees to take this class. Some of your biology labs do charge a fee, maybe $10, $20. There's no fees associated with this class. Uh, so financial aid shouldn't see us any differently. I hope I summarize that. And I think Dr. Zayden has something to add. Yeah, I can be of, of a little limited use here. So what we're, we're doing this fall is it's starting of a, a stay on track program um, where it's really financial aid is only going to be covering classes in your major. So if you are declared, you know, the, the you teach biology major, all these will be covered under that, under financial aid, no problem. If you are a biology major, like a straight up biology major with a minor or with the biological sciences thing right now, if you take this extra course, it, it would not be covered by financial aid because it's not part of your your degree plan now if you would go remember you take 12 hours and then anything above that is free so if you take a full load of 12 hours that meet your major and if it's not the you teach one then that one hour for that 
that step one thing, that would be free and it's not a problem. If you, however, use that one hour as part of your 12, then no, that one would not be covered if you did not declare it as the actual you teach major. Very insightful. Thank you, Dr. Zayden. Um, I have my moments. That's, that's okay. Uh, so financial aid, like I want, we want to answer that question, but it also goes to like financial aid tells, they, they're, they're the deciding factor. They decide uh, everything regarding that. And I mean, but Dr. Zayden was correct. Uh, it's, you have a huge incentive to take any hours beyond 12 hours because it's financially smart. Uh, doesn't mean it's the work gets any easier. It's still tough work. Uh, but it's something you might want to consider. Um, so I think I want to share something, some insight for you all real quick. With the UTeach program, you get master teachers. That's what we call ourselves, the, the teachers of the, the teachers, the master teachers. Uh, we are part of the program throughout. So you might see me if you're in the Edinburgh campus. You'll see Dr. Groves if you're in the Bronzeville campus. And you can switch between campuses. It's totally good. We're one university. So if you want to start in Bronzeville and switch, you can or vice versa, but you're gonna see us throughout the program. So I'm in the beginning, I'm in the middle, I'm in the end, I'm all over the place. And the same is true for Dr. Groves. Um, the last thing I wanna say is that, well, actually I, enough talking about me, I wanna hear from a student. Kayla, just give us some insight, give us some more insight about you teach. I know you just finished step one. Tell us about how you felt in the beginning of the class to how you, how you ended step one, because that's what we're trying to inform the students about. Um, okay, so for me, it was a little different because last semester in spring was actually my first semester at UTRGV, which is how it might be for some of you because you're incoming freshmen. Um, but I started UTeach and I was really nervous because I didn't know anybody at UTRGV. I didn't know how UTRGV worked. And I was scared because I was transferring in from like a private university to like more public university. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's so much of us. There's like, it's gonna be totally like, nobody's gonna know your name or anything, but right away, like in you teach, like that was completely not how it ended. Like towards the end of you teach, you know, like so many people, like the people in your class, like you have like group chats with them and you talk about like your different projects and you have a teaching partner during you teach um, that you like really connect with because you guys are like, going through the lesson plans and you're practicing for hours. And it sounds like a lot, but it's not, it's really fun. And at the end of you teach, I kind of just felt like this is something I wanted to do more of, which is why I registered for step two um, in this upcoming semester. But I was just like really impressed by everything. Like the professors, they all like respond so fast. It was just like a really good, like environment like there was like like a really like big sense of community I guess I even talked to like the advisors um that are specific with you teach um because I was like really nervous I didn't know if I wanted to do biology for a while or like a different kind of science but the advisors are really good too on like showing you like what you have and like what you need to have and it was just like a lot of fun for me it was just like a curious thing that ended up being like a like a community thing. And it was just like, it was a good experience for me. So yeah, so, but I've only done step one. So <laughs> Kayla, I, there's a question that says, uh, what was your favorite thing about you teach? Um, I think actually teaching, cause like you have like this idea of teaching in your head, but you teach gives you the opportunity to like teach different lessons. In step one, they're like elementary level lessons. So like we did like a sink or float lesson. And we I remember we actually had like these like mason jars with like colored liquid and you have to actually like be teaching because of COVID, unfortunately, we did it like with our own class. Um, but it was like a lot of fun to actually like have to practice like being a teacher and like there's people asking you questions and you have to know your material. And it was just like a real teaching environment but then you still have like the science aspect to it, which is like what I really like too. So it was just really cool. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Nayeli, do you wanna, would you like to add anything to that? What was your favorite thing about you teach? So whenever I taught, it was in person. So we were able to do that um, lesson sink or float in person. And I remember um, we had to prepare for it. We had to make sure we um, communicated with the teacher about the students and like how it's going to be structured and 
I would have to say it's different, of course, because it's online versus in person. And what I really like about you teach is like after uh, step one, if you continue, you you'll be surrounded with the same people as you go on to your higher um, classes. So you pretty much know everyone in your classes, or at least had them once before. So you're able to like communicate yourself with them. You're able to like get feedback and advice from them or like vice versa, you could help them out. So I think it's just, you teach overall, um, there's an organization that's called a you teach organization and there you could um, socialize more, you can do outreach and much, much more. Thanks, Nayeli. Appreciate that. I, I, I found the student I want to bring up. I, I totally missed you. Jenna Scoggin, she started in step one and she's in my class, research methods right now. Jenna, sorry to have <laughs> missed out on you. Tell us about your experience in step one. Tell us where you're at now. Tell us what you're doing this summer. I started in step one last fall. I did step one, I did step two, like the other students talked about. And then after that, I took, or at the, at the same time as step two, actually, I took a class called Knowing and Learning. And we really got to learn about like the background behind education. Like we talked about novices versus experts. We got to write a whole research paper and stuff like that. And then right now I'm taking research methods with Mr. Elizondo, like he was talking about. And it's really cool because we get to write our own, they're called inquiries. It's like basically doing a science project and then learning about how to write it um, in like a professional manner. And I think at the end of the summer, we're gonna be doing an actual scientific poster with our findings and all of that. Um, and so then he's also asking me to talk about my summer. So right now I'm in the UTeach internship, which is something you can apply for after step two, I believe. And um, right now it was, I was, it was in person for a little bit, like in, in June. And what I got to do is I got to go to the University Center of Excellence, which is basically um, where schools can um, apply to have students teach their children um, like activities. So it's mostly been like elementary schools who the teachers come in on Zoom and the students log in as well. And then me, and then a few of the other students, we lead activities like STEM, STEM based activities. And so I got to write a few of those lessons. I got to watch the, the older students do them. And for right now, there haven't been any, any students coming in. So we've just been working from home, but I have gotten to write a lot of activities, which I think we'll be using in the fall semester. So yeah. Thanks, Jenna. Appreciate that. Uh, so I know that money is an issue for some of y'all, right? Uh, that'd be, of course, I mean, even when I went to school, money was an issue. So we do have scholarships and we do have internships. Let me just share my screen so I can share a little bit with you. Uh, we have scholarships and internships. I will admit, I will say this. A lot of these are for people who are in the middle to the end of the program. So it doesn't mean you shouldn't know about it now because everybody needs to know about when money is an opportunity. We have money for students. We have a scholarship for students who are in their final class at, in the UTeach program. So that way, when they're teaching in a school every day, we try to offset that, uh, that financial issue with them. Another opportunity is called the Robert Noyce Scholarship. This is an excellent scholarship. It actually can cover all of your education or a lot of it. I can't say all of it, but a lot of it. But this is for students. I want to highlight part D right here. Let me zoom in. It's for students who have completed step one and step two. Uh, it's for students who have shown they have, a, they have an interest in teaching and they want to complete the program. But you can get a lot of money covered. They can be awarded up to 13,150 per uh, academic year. And this is only for you teach students. So you're not competing against students from all the university. It's only students in the you teach program, which really helps your chances of getting it as long as you fulfill the GPA requirements, the course requirements and all the stuff. So the selection pool is a lot smaller. And if you ever wanna see our students who has received the actual scholarship, we do have our recipients list. So these are all students of different backgrounds, but they all focused on math and science. They wanted to be teachers and they all had the opportunity to apply for this scholarship. So while, you, in, while we're not giving away money or offering money in the beginning, it does come up a little bit later where you can get scholarships as well as interns based on what Jenna had said. 
So there is opportunities for money. It's just not just yet in the beginning of the program. Let's see here. Okay, Dr. Gross just put in the question. I mean, the, the website for you, please visit that website. Is there any other questions or Dr. Zayden, if you wanna share any other insights about how these students can survive as they enter their freshman year, anything that you, we may have missed? I mean, just basic survival skills. Um, and we'll, 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 if you're, you're a brand new student, we'll talk more about this at, at Roundup, events like that. But, you know, really just be calm. First semester, <laughs> I still have flashbacks to my first semester. Um, you're not prepared for it. And just accept that and roll with it. Don't get, don't get down. You know, you're going to get, you know, popped in the chops a couple times on tests. Just be cool. Be calm. You'll figure it out. So just be patient with yourself. Um, this is going to be, you know, a very interesting semester. You know, we've been, you know, locked down for quite some time. I mean, hey, this is not some fancy Zoom background I bought on eBay. Okay, this is the closet inside my house because I spent like a year and a half. That light behind me there, that's one of the snake cages I have here. This is like the only space I could carve out here, that, <laughs> this, this closet here. So this is where I've, I've rotted the past time. We're gonna be coming in, we're gonna be mostly face-to-face. -face. So that's gonna be another big change. So this is gonna be a, a very challenging semester, not just for a first semester, but a first semester with a major paradigm shift from what we've sort of gotten used to. So just believe in yourself, you can fix it. Whatever you screw up, what you can't fix, I can probably fix. So just, uh, just, just be kind to yourself and be patient and just sort of learn for it. It's going to be overwhelming, uh, especially any of the new student things you go to. They, they, they try to see how much they could possibly pack into it. <laughs> have physicists brought in on board to figure out how you can compress space and time to get even more in there. Okay, so you are going to be just totally overwhelmed. Just breathe and remember everyone else is as lost as you are. Yeah. Everyone's going to be lost, but you can be helped with, of course, Dr. Zayden's help. But I want to share this with you. If you're part of the UTeach program, you get your very own advisor. We have two advisors, one in Brownsville, one in Edinburgh. We have Danka Mogilska. She's in Brownsville. Here's her info. It's on the website in case you want to contact her. And then in Edinburgh, we have Monica Yates. Their jobs are to focus on you if you're part of the you teach program. So if you're part of the club, they're going to help you. They're going to help you tell you what classes you should sign up for. They're going to help you with GPA issues. And like Dr. Zayden said earlier, you're going to have issues where you want to sign up for a class and the system won't let you and you need permission. Who do I talk to? These are your starting individuals who will help you with that. They are focused on one group only, and that is you teach students. So as Kayla says in the chat, they're the best. They are fantastic advisors. I'm not, I don't know anything about the other advisors and other programs, but you never know who you're gonna to talk to. You're always gonna to talk to Ms. Magilska or Ms. Yates every single time if you are with the UTeach program. So if you're ever confused, you can talk to us, the master teachers, you can talk to your advisors. And of course you can go ahead and email Dr. Zayden, because he went ahead and provided you with his email address and he will help you. He's a wonderful advocate for the students. Dr. Groves, anything you wanna share before our time runs out? So I would just say, you know, best of luck this fall. And I think the most important thing you can do is find your people. So all of the people who just spoke want to help people. You can email any one of us and we might not know the answer, but we're gonna help you find the answer. Um, the advisors. You know, um, find a peer group because a lot of times those people have insider information like, oh, which class should I take? And, you know, things like that. Um, but don't be afraid to reach out for help, ask questions. Um, you know, you, you just never know what information you might come across and, uh, you know, set the goal of making it to the end because this is not a race and the smartest and the fastest person doesn't make it. It's the people that stick with it 
Okay, and I think everybody here can either attest to that or is in the process of that. So just stick with it, reach out for help and support. You're gonna make it to that finish line. Um, you know, slow and steady wins the race and we only have 58 seconds. So anybody wants to say anything else? I put in the chat about joining clubs and organizations. I think that's a really good way to meet friends, especially who have common interests with you. Um, and I did send a little poster flyer for my, not my club, but uh, um, the chemistry club for in the fall. We have a lot of stuff planned um, and I'll definitely be your friend. I mean, I'm not even that much older than you all. I'm only just like one, one year older, I think. Me too. Yeah, it's open to chem, bio, anything. You don't have to be in chemistry. It's just like studying, not studying chemistry, but learning more about it and stuff. Yeah, Martin, you can join both. Uh, just like what Jenna was saying, and I'll just reiterate, as you enter your freshman year, be the biggest science nerd you can. It can only help you be a nerd. It's cool to be a nerd in, in, at the university. All right, that's how you get to be with the rest of us. All right, good talking with everybody. what even if it's like during lecture sometimes you might be thinking like oh no like this is an upper level, upper level chemistry course like nobody has questions everybody has questions we're all just scared to ask because we're always thinking no nobody has questions everybody understands I can pretty much guarantee somebody else has that same question that you have so always ask questions if your professor offers you office hours go to those office hours um I would like it to go in person. A lot of the times it'd be like, oh, email me the question or, you know, now that we have the whole Zoom thing, but, you know, always going in person was great because then they could show you their, like, this is how this mechanism works or this is how we, this equation works to get to this answer. You know, it's very great. Always take those office hours, you know, go to them every chance that you get. If it doesn't work around it, make an appointment. Um, pretty much always be in your professor's like area when like at the proper times, you know, because they are going to, they're going to help you. Even if it's upper level chemistry, they're, they're, they're there. They, I'm sorry. They are there to help you. Um, let's see what else. I think that's pretty much it. Like as advice goes, always ask questions, go to the office hours. Um, and oh, one big thing that I remember now, um, if your professor doesn't assign homework, but they say, oh, well, there's questions in the back of the book, or I'm going to upload questions and you can do them if you want. Do not take that as if you want, like do those questions, they will help you so much. And then if you go and like I said, go to the office hours, even if it's not mandatory, do those questions because it'll help you out in the end. And a lot of the times chemistry always connects. It may not seem like it because you have um, like organic, inorganic, you have instrumental, analytical, physical chemistry, but they all connect in one way or another, the, the like, equations come back. Or, you quit, or they'll say, oh, you'll see this later. And you do see it later. It's not just like they mention it and you don't see it again. You do. So just kind of keep every, like chemistry always in the back of your mind. Well, not in the back of your mind because it's your degree. Um, but, you know, just always do those questions. Like those questions they say, oh, no, it's not homework. You don't have to do, it. do those questions. They help you out a lot, especially in exams. Just a couple other small things. So in terms of the pace, um, if you take a summer class, uh, one week in the summer is equivalent to about three weeks in the regular semester. And so that's why the summer classes just seem so intense, right? Because they go really, really fast. And so that's kind of what the pace you can expect for the semester to be. Yeah. And so that's, you know, summer is really intense. Yeah. Thanks, Danny, Dr. Smith. I had a couple of follow-up questions really for Danny. Um, and thinking about what Ethem said before we started sharing um, how, right, he's been mostly kind of a, a virtual learning environment, and now we're going back face-to-face, -face, both for um, lecture classes, some of which might be pretty big, and then also for lab classes in chemistry. And I, I love the overview that you gave, Danny. Thanks for sharing that. And I noticed you mentioned, Danny, um, a lot of like support mechanisms um, so that students don't have to feel right, like they're on their own and they've just got to figure it figured out. And um, I noticed you mentioned for the lab portion, 
um, that you have lab partners and lab groups. Can you just um, address, we only have just a few minutes left, but can you add anything else to like that in-person support piece? So if someone is in actual chemistry lab, how big are the lab classes more or less? And do you have TAs um, like upper level undergrad or graduate students that are leading that walk around so that if you do have a question, you can just ask them right then and there, or are most of the questions that you need to ask um, separate outside of class time, like in office hours, whether they're in-person office hours or Zoom office hours? So labs are usually pretty small. Um, I think the biggest I've been in, it's like maybe 20, 24 students. It's never really that big because, um, and it always has to be, sometimes it's mostly an even number because, you know, groups of two usually like pairs. Sometimes we do have groups of four, but like I said, they're, they're pretty small compared to our lecture classes that could be up to like 60, 70 students. Um, so they are small. And most of the time you do work with somebody, you're hardly ever doing anything alone just because, you know, it's, you know, you're working with chemicals and you're gathering data and like not everybody's going to catch everything at the same time. You know, somebody could catch something before somebody else does. So always working with partners. Um, most times as a student, I had TAs. Um, the professor would come in sometimes and they would present, you know, what we were going to do. And then the TA would, you know, follow up with that and be there. And if we had any questions, we would ask the TA or professor, depending, because sometimes professors didn't have TAs and I would have the professor for the lab. So you could ask questions there, you know, regarding the lab. And, um, and if you didn't get to get to that question or if you got a question that kind of stumped the professor or the, the TA, they would be like, you know what, like, um, come during my office hours and I should have an answer for you by then. So it just depended the situation. Thanks, Danny. And I have one more question that might help you them in our last quick minute here. Um, you mentioned like doing right, taking advantage of extra practice problems, extra homework problems, even if they're not mandatory. Um, definitely that, that's always good, right, for any class um, and especially in chemistry where they're often problem-based. Um, one of the things we always recommend to our students, regardless of their major, is to find like a study group, right? Form a study group. And one of the nice things about in-person at UTRGV that I've noticed semester after semester is people will be like, hey, let's go up to the third floor and sit at these tables and have a study group. Or let's, you know, study in person before our chemistry tests in one of the rooms in the library. Um, what advice do you have for kind of finding a study group that might work um, since that's easier to do usually when you see people in person versus when you're in a virtual environment. Okay, so in chemistry, um, whoever you sit next to or whoever you feel like is going to help you, like always approach them. If you feel like they understand it a little bit better, go to them. And the library is one of the best places to go. If not, the UT certain workroom is another good place to go and meet and work on those problems. Yes, my name is Melissa Lugo. My major is mathematics and my classification is senior. Yay! <laughs> she's made it. She's survived <laughs> and she's smiling and she's nervous. <laughs> so happy for both of y'all doing student teaching. Excellent. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Giovanna Lee Torres. I am a mathematics and I am a senior, but I like to go by Geo, so Geo is fine. <laughs> What advice do you have for your fellow math majors to help them do well in their classes? So I think we can we can start with Melissa for this one, and then we'll go with Gio, because I want to hear both of your answers. Okay, so the biggest thing that it took me a while to understand too, is that the teachers, the faculty, the advisors, they actually do want to help you. They do actually care if you do good in class, because I, I feel like my first semester, even my whole first year, I was very hesitant to ask for help, not only in my UTeach classes, but also in my math classes, because I I was new, it was a new experience in college. It's it's tough and it's it's also shy not only to make new friends, but also to like email your professor. And I think the biggest advice is just that they do care and not be shy to ask for help because they're more than willing to help you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Melissa. Gio? 
What advice do you have for them to do well in their classes? Um, my advice would be agreeing with Melissa because I was shy and I just felt so intimidated by the professors, but I don't know, I just never had the courage to ask them. But what really helped me was my classmates, like among the UT students, we made our own like group and we all kind of scheduled to have all of our classes together. So I knew I was having them and we would study together. So I would say just pairing up with um, like maybe one or two um, classmates from you teach and be like, hey, let's take this class together and study together. And they're like, you all like go up to graduation like that. So that that's my advice. Thank you. And I guess that's the beauty about you teach that our, in our classes, you get to work a lot with the team or with a partner and you get to know your classmates very, very well and they become best friends. And like Jesus, they take the classes together and help each other. Okay. So now I'm gonna start with Gio. Gio, what made you decide to be a math major? Okay, so I think um, when I was like five, I would put put my stuffed animals and I would be the teacher. But in, in high school, I took the medical route. And I remember I wanted to be a, like a, like a newborn nurse but I went to the practicums and I didn't like it and after that um, I started helping a teacher during tutoring sessions and I really liked that so then um, that's how I kind of decided to be a math teacher and I remember in my orientation they had the you teach program and then that was my this is where I'm at this is my section and that's how I decided very good. Melissa, what made you decide to be a math major? Okay, so when I migrated from Mexico to here, I didn't really know the language English. So in, in elementary, I couldn't really connect to any other subject but math because math is very universal. You're adding blocks. It's, you don't need language to understand math. Numbers are numbers everywhere. So my love for math started there because it was the only thing I could really connect to. And with the years, I was blessed with such amazing math teachers, which I feel like not only uh, made my love for math grow, but it also made me think and realize maybe I want to be a math teacher and impact the students in a way that my math teachers all throughout my academic career impacted me. So it was kind of an easy, easy decision to, to make when I uh, graduated high school to major in mathematics and to join the UTeach program. Yeah. Thank you. Can I add more to that? I, being that I know Melissa, I had her for step two. So we were in the middle schools. Uh, she, she, you're going high school, right, Melissa? And she, let me just say what she did at the middle schools and teaching the students face to face. She was amazing. And you could already see that the connection with the students. So she's got a knack for that. She related with the kids. Wonderful. She kept them engaged, the questioning, and she's just starting out. So I could imagine now that she's gone through the whole program, she's going to be an amazing teacher. I mean, I could already see that her love for kids and the passionate for mathematics. And then one female, smart and Hispanic, all that she's got so many pluses. So it's a great opportunity going into the classrooms as early as your freshman year. And she was right. She says, I was kind of quiet. I didn't know who to ask, but she became friends with, with just with the you teach program. So she's going to be wonderful out there. So I wish her the best. Yes. And, and I think, like I said, that's one of the beauties of the you teach program that you get to try everything in the beginning. Like I can tell you, I get asked this question, like I could probably say, I didn't know I wanted to be a math major or math teacher. I knew I liked math, but I wasn't sure about being a teacher. And then back then you would go to this career and go to the schools until your senior year. So my first three years, I was like, ah, is this really gonna be for me? What if I'm just spending time and money? In the end it worked out and I loved it. But that's the beauty of, of you teach it from the beginning, even if you're not sure, or if you're completely sure, like Melissa, you can still try it out and figure this is something for you. Okay. She tried, it out. she tried it out and you know what? She went all the way through it. Yeah, and you're absolutely right, Ms. Lavinia, where we go in as a math teacher, we've never seen kids 
in our in, in, at all right. until last year and like oh my god am i it's gonna like all it? overwhelming it's just so much and so i did make the right choice but i wanted to be a nurse but for somehow i just love mathematics but the opportunity now that you're able to go in as your freshman year and you try it out if it's right. not right. meant for you you know what leave it move on to something else so we're yes. giving you that opportunity totally correct yes Okay, so what are some resources, for example, tutoring, free printing, free printing, free printing study groups that you would recommend for your fellow math majors? Uh, Melissa, do you want to start answering this one? Sure. So there is the learning center, but as you go along with your math courses, sometimes it is harder to find tutors that can help you. And like uh, Gio said, it's those study groups within your classes are going to help a lot because I remember I think it was my third semester in my class uh, intro to proof. I was so lost. I, I, I remember I bombed my first exam and I was so scared that I had to retake the exam. But then I knew some people in the class. So we got connected and we ended up going to Starbucks together and we stayed there basically the whole day. And I remember leaving Starbucks and having such a better understanding of the class. And I ended up passing with an A. So that just shows how important it is to get connected with your peers, because as you get more advanced in your college classes, it is going to be harder to find tutors within the school to help you. But there is like if the math department, there are a lot of tutors, but not, with the learning center, it is a little more difficult to find that kind of help. Um, yeah, I remember my first year I would go to the learning center, but it was only like for like College algebra, pre-cal, and calculus one. I think that's the max one. But those um, study groups did help me a lot. But I would also add going to the counseling center because you need to take care of yourself. If you can't take care of yourself, you won't be able to do good in your classes, work, nothing. So um, I personally didn't try them and I regret it now. But I had a couple of friends that like did go to counseling um, and it just helped them a lot, like with time management, stress and anxiety and all this type of things. So take advantage of those resources that are available. And I don't know, just take care of yourself and your mental health. That would be my advice. Very important nowadays. I think we hear this every day and it's very, very important. Um, besides all of that, I do want to mention Ida that we do have free printing. I believe each student can print up to 500 pages, I think each semester. Is that correct, ladies? Yeah, it's about 500 in the, in the college. Right, and, you, and it's easy to print. There's different like printing stations throughout campus. Um, you can also print for free your posters for your presentations. We have students in our classes, in the YouTube classes, print out posters for their lessons that they're going to use for with their students. So just take advantage. I mean, you're already paying it with your fees, so mm -hmm. use it. Okay, I like the next one. What are some organizations, group, or social events for math majors that you would recommend? Gio. Because you yeah. was our president, a club, a club president for what, more than a year, I think? I think I think it was two years. Wow, and she was but, amazing, yes. Yeah, um, I would recommend, well, obviously the you teach program. Um, we yeah. have like events like Charriada, um, Open House, Hestec, and like we, or you get to connect a lot of with your peers. And you get like free shirts and like food sometimes, right? But um, you get to connect with other other UTRGV students and like, as you see all the table setups, like setups in the involvement fairs. So you get to meet more people, you get to know about the resources or like if you see another club that you like, you're like, oh yes. And um, just getting involved in campus, but there's all this type of um, organizations, people that want to help you. So just get involved as much as possible, but know how to limit yourself. Like, you know, when you're too stressed out and you know, when you can have to say no. So just finding that balance, but like you, you charge me or any universities are for you to explore 
So I know this program called WISP and it's women in STEM programs. And I, like uh, Gio said, I did get with the whole COVID, I, I did leave that program, but I regret it because I would still get the emails and the president or whoever's in charge was so nice. And the emails are like, how are you feeling? Like send hearts, send this color heart. If you feel this way, send this color heart. And I, and I feel like that's such a good bonding experience. And also because we all know that women in STEM, there's not uh, that many, we're undermined by a lot of men in STEM. So I feel like this program really uplifted us and I would still read the emails and I would still get empowered and try to keep going. I do regret leaving, but like Gio said, it is important to check yourself if you are able to be committed to all these programs that you wanna be in and still have a handle on all your classwork. But yes, it's WISP, Women in STEM programs. Women in STEM, okay. And, and I wanna add more to the uh, getting involved with the organization. Uh, I'm one of the advisors from the Edinburgh campus and, and we're really out there in the community where we go to the schools and the principals are already looking at our students. So when they're presenting to fifth graders or middle school or judging science fairs, the principals are saying, okay, when does she graduate? I really like her. I mean, they are, the principals already got a name, a face to that student. And, and so when they graduate, they're already calling them up. I said, okay. Uh, or they just say, okay, I'm already, remember me? I did some volunteer there. And so your face is out there in the public, already in the community. Servicing in the community is so important. Uh, and you don't have to do everything. You have to know when to say no and, and yes. But uh, we do get involved quite a bit in the schools where uh, we've gone to the colonias and go tutor kids because there's a little area that we have in Edinburgh where the parents are just saying, I need help. I need someone to come in and help and encourage our kids to stay in school. So we go into the little campus and we do some tutoring and we talk about college life. So uh, we're out there and the UTeach program really supports the community. So I'd say get involved. And if it's in the STEM majors with women, by all means, uh, there's so many out there, but you got to limit yourself. There's a time and a place. But keep in mind also, Adeli, is that college is going to be your best times in your life. These are your new friends that you meet and you just don't know if they're going to be your bosses or your superintendent or your or your your teacher that's going to be there in that campus. So it's so important to get involved in, and get to know your community. Yes, yes. I wanted to add how you see the other organizations that they have on campus. Um, once you log in into UTRGV, they have the assist login, but um, they blackboard and all the other stuff, but look for the B link. And that's where you could see like all the other events. Yes, the B link, that's very good. Especially now that most, most of the things are virtual, because usually when you walk in through campus, you see the organization having or participate in an event, but if you go to the links, you can find how uh, clubs are leading their lives virtually. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, so you're also part of the UTeach program. What made you decide to use the UTeach program? And what are some of the things you like about the program and your classes? Okay, so um, although I did know that I wanted to go into teaching, I I did contemplate going in, like being an education major because my parents were like, that'll be a lot easier. Like, don't do math. Like you're going to, it's going to hurt your head. It's going to be too much work. But then one of my friends was already in the UTeach program and she was telling me how she was already going into the classrooms and teaching. And not only that, but teaching math, which is what I wanted to be. I felt like I had to do that, not only because I did want to continue learning more math and not just going the education route, but also the UTeach master teachers, they're teaching you how to teach the subject you want to teach in the future. So I feel like that was an easy an easy thing for me to choose. And also, like um, Ms. Gonzalez said, it is a family. Like at the beginning, of course, you're going to be shy. You're going to be like, a, a don't know where to sit, don't know who to talk to. But as time goes on, like Gio said, you're going to see the familiar faces. You're going to say, oh, I had that girl in linear algebra. Oh, I had. And then you're going to see them at the you teach. Uh, classes and little by little there you're gonna see how things come together and like they said for uh step one is you have partners so that also helps you a lot 
with the whole planning, because there's going to be a lot of planning with the lesson plans. They help you, not only your partner, but the advisors are all there. The teachers will always be there to help you. So that's that. Thank you, Melissa. Gio? Okay, so the reason why I decided to do, join the UTeach program is because orientation, they had like other presentations, kind of like here, but it was in person. And I was like, oh, let me sign up. And I signed up like right then and there. And what I really like about UTeach is the exposure since like the first day, like you get to create everything because I know some um, some of my friends are like into the bilingual and the special education and they don't get that exposure. So like how uh, Ms. Gonzalez and Ms. Lavino had didn't have that experience until their senior year and they're like, Eesh. like would I like it or would I not like it? And I really like that. Um, the other thing is, they teach you how school can be fun. Where they, as teachers, they like they make you modify the lessons, so it's um, engaging the students. And I really like that. I really like the projects. I was really hoping to do my project, my project-based instruction lesson with the other high school students, but thanks COVID, it didn't happen. But um, I don't know, just those type of projects and lesson plans that you get to do with the students from elementary, middle school, and high school. I think those are the most fun, as for me. But. I totally agree with you. <laughs> yes, great answers. <laughs> there's a lot of support, just, just that I want to add this. There's a lot of support, like Mr. Lissandro mentioned earlier. Um, you have two to three master teachers in the classes. You're giving ideas for your lesson plans. You practice the lesson with your professors. And then they go with you to teach the lesson. So they're always with you. And then you might think, oh, class is over. I'm not going to see these professors again. Well, that's not true. You get to stick with us for so many years because we're going to be um, helping with you in your other classes. And then we're going to be your professors again in student teaching. And then you're going to graduate and we're going to go visit you and we provide professional development. So it's a big very strong community that we build here in UTeach. And that's something that I think all of us are very proud of. And I, I think we're gonna love that part of it. Okay. Um, now let's talk a little bit about student life at UTRUB. What are some things incoming freshmen should know about UTRUB? So what are some things that you wish you knew when you were a freshman and you can tell I then now that it's just here. Do you, do you want to start? Oh, yes, books. The textbooks, I know they are super expensive. Um, there is like, if you have Facebook, there's like this Facebook page where the UTRGB and TSC textbooks and they trade or you, they get to sell them. So I would look into those because I, I found a book that was like five bucks. It was a little torn, but I mean, I would rather pay the five bucks than the like $50 on Amazon. So I would go that route. Um, if you receive financial aid, make sure you meet the requirements. And if you get the refund, spend it wisely because those access codes for the homeworks are super expensive. They charge me book trades. There's 19,000 people there. So okay. you're you're bound to find something if you need Writing it. Writing them down. <laughs> book yeah. trades. That's on Facebook? Yes. Yeah. It's this big private group that you can request a few and not and then there's more than just books and people just like sometimes they're selling other stuff like phones and stuff so it's very useful uh some things that I and just a small advice I was living on campus but again the first year I was real shy so I was I would just go to my class and come back to my dorm and go to the dining hall and come back to my dorm I feel like I missed out on college life basically now that I'm graduating it's like I feel like I didn't get to experience college at all so my thing is is like if you have to study go to the library and study there instead of home or instead of your dorm or if you want to go eat go to the student union and and sit there for a while and someone might sit with you or you might go and talk to someone because I feel like that's something I regret doing just living in my dorm all day and just going out to eat or something. So I feel like just walk around the campus. It's a beautiful campus and just sit down on a bench, enjoy 
outside and you might bump into someone you knew, know or make new friends and then you can actually experience the college life you're meant to experience. Yeah, and that's one thing I do recommend is that all of y'all should really get to know your classmates. Uh, get into the you teach office. So that way you meet your it's all math and science. So don't forget to walk into that work room and study and get to know each other. That's one advice. Make friends. These are your best years of your life. Lifetime friends, because I have my friends from college still. Another thing I'm going to ask you also is to get to know your advisors. Your advisor is going to be the one that's going to support you. They're the ones that are going to guide you to the right direction. They're going to say, okay, take this class. If you don't take it now, it's going to postpone your graduation. So you really want to get to know your advisors, get advice. That's the best advice I could give you. You will graduate within the three and a half years to four years, not seven years, but your four years. Um, it's okay if you don't know what you're doing. It's yeah. okay if you want to take like, you know what? I don't want to do you teach anymore. Like that's what university is about. Like for you to explore other routes, and also like if you take like an extra semester, an extra year, two years, it's totally fine. Like, it doesn't matter as long as you're doing what you're doing, it's, it's okay to con just continue on, you know, like, so it's okay. Life is not a race. You have your own path and just stick with that. And it's okay to like, stop, go up, go down, do a whole detour, and right. it's totally fine. We all have bumps and it's, I have a friend who used to say it's, it's a carrera, no carreritas. So if you know Spanish, you know what that means. It's a, it's a, it's a career, it's not a race. Um, so is this semester, a lot of classes are moving online because of COVID-19. What did you advise for doing well in an online class? Yes, um, having the Outlook app on your phone so you can get email notifications on your phone, not just when you log in to your computer, having the Blackboard app on your phone as well and turn on the notifications as well for that. Email your professors. Um, I started emailing my professors this past year. I missed out on so much. The professors would answer and they would not only help me with what I'm, I was uh, wondering about, but they would also send me like extra examples. And I feel like I missed out on all, so much help during my first year of college. But yes, with COVID, a, a planner, I feel like that's all, it's always been said, but it's always so hard to keep up with a planner. So maybe an online planner, like on your phone, when you get actual notifications because a, a book planner, I mean, I bought some, but I didn't really use them and they didn't really help me. But yes, so that's that. I'm sure all the Zoom rooms were amazing. Sorry, I couldn't join them, but I'm looking forward to hearing how those went. Um, if you want to continue the conversation, several of us are going to be putting into the chat our email. So uh, feel free to email us and we can either reply through email or set up a, a Zoom meeting or when everybody gets back to campus, a nice socially distanced meeting if that's what you would prefer. But in the meantime, we have two academic advisors here to help us out uh, before we wrap up today's session, uh, Ms. Savage and Mr. Hernandez. So I am going to uh, pass the mic to them and let them share some final thoughts and wisdom before we uh, wrap up today's Q&A. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Miranda Savage, and I'm a lead academic advisor with the Acting Advising Department. I'm stepping in for Ms. Leticia Carmio. She's one of our associate directors, and she wanted me to share that you teach students see academic advisors for their first semester in the two sessions in Vaqueto 1 and Vaqueto 2, um, where we cover your degree plan, important university policies, and course recommendations. Then the following semester, you transition over to your you teach advisors and you see them for the remainder of your undergraduate degree. However, if you do decide that you want to change majors, you can always reach out back to us and we can help guide you in a different major. That being said, you teach is a wonderful degree and it provides many opportunities and the staff is very supportive. So I know you're in great hands. So I highly recommend you teach. Um, Jesse, is there anything you want to share? Yes, thank you, Miranda. 
Um, my name is Jesus Fernandez. I'm an associate director with the Academic Advising Center. You can call me Jesse. Uh, and, and based on what Miranda shared, I hope that you take away that um, if you are a you teach student, um, and really I hope what you learned today, not just from us, but from, from everybody who got to share, if you are a UT student, there are so many people looking out for you. Um, it's a great program. Um, with advising specifically, you know, you have advisors in your first semester in the Academic Advising Center, and then you get to have your own you teach academic advisors for the rest of your time at UTRDB. So there are really people looking out for you, uh, and I think that's really exciting. Some of you here with us today might be a part of the university college because you have not yet declared a major. And I believe the invitation went out to those students as well. So some of you might be here and you might be undeclared and you took the opportunity to learn more about UTeach to see if it's something that you may wanna do. Um, I applaud you, that's awesome. Um, I want to, to speak to any of those students um, and say this is the type of, of, of Q&A, this is the type of event you should be attending to help, um, you know, help you in, in figuring out um, what you might want to study in your time at UTRDV. As an undeclared student, you are a part of the university college and you do have a dean. Um, she is our associate provost for student success and she's the dean of the university college, Dr. Jonathan Charlton. Um, and she is um, absolutely a great resource um, and would definitely encourage you to be checking out events like these um, that will help you find your place at UTRDV and if that's you teach, um, you know, that's excellent. So um, I applaud you all for being here learning more about the program um, and hope that you are getting ready for an exciting first year at UTRD. Thank you so much. Well, that just about does it for us today. Thank you for spending uh, the last of your July with us before we head into August, head into the new school year. Um, we are so excited that you have decided to come to UTRGV, that you are either gung-ho about the College of Sciences or interested and, and maybe want to give it a try. We hope to see many of you in our Step 1 classes this fall. If you can't make it this fall, guess what? We offer them in the spring too. So, you know, you have that option as well. But if you are interested, we definitely recommend trying them out, one credit hour class, see if teaching's right for you, and uh, begin your, your career here at UTRGV on a very strong foot with your UTeach family. Um, here are some websites uh, for the University um, College of Sciences and the UTeach program if you'd like to learn more. We have several emails in the chat. Uh, from our you teach students who did a fantastic job. Thank you to them. Um, so if you'd like to chat with them more or from several of the master teachers, advisors, and, and people who were here today. Um, that pretty much does it for us. But if you would like to stick around, ask more questions, either in the chat or mic on, we'll be happy to do so. Happy to answer those questions for you. And we can't wait to see you in the fall. It's going to be a great semester. We're so happy that you're here. Thank you so much, everybody.